Welcome to my studio. This is video number seven. And in this video, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to draw a seascape. This is a photograph that I took when I was on vacation in, uh, in Maine, up at the uh, Arcadia National Park up there. And uh, I'm going to show you how to break this down into a, a simpler drawing. First, I want to kind of talk about the way I approach a drawing. I generally try to approach it as if I was looking at the scene through a camera lens. And the camera lens was slightly out of focus so that I didn't see the details. All I saw were shapes and values, dark and light. And as you progress through the drawing, it's like you're slowly sharpening the focus on that camera lens to where you begin to see a little bit more of the detail. And uh, that's the way I kind of try to approach every drawing. This drawing is obviously a little bit more complex than the puppy drawing was, but it's still just a matter of shapes and values. And it's kind of like that old saying of how do you eat an elephant? You eat an elephant one bite. If you've been following my videos, you know that number five, video number five, I went into some detail about how I scale up a drawing. Okay, we started this drawing and I've gotten uh, pretty well along here, but uh, I'm going to leave some areas. I've left some areas unfinished so I can show you how I approached it. And you approach each one of these grids the same way. And just if you think of it in terms of not a whole drawing at this point, but just getting the shapes in each grid. And uh, that kind of simplifies it. So let's, uh, let's start with the uh, this grid right here. I have uh, blocked in my basic shape right here, like this, a little bit right there. And just by guessing where the where the, each point is in the in the uh, in the in the grid. And then I gave it an overall tone of uh, graphite. It's sort of a mid-tone. This way I can go darker in some areas and I can take my eraser and erase out other areas. So let's continue on with this one right here. I've got some shapes down in here in the water, just a little bit of the rock showing through. And there's some shadow in here with the water. There's water that comes down here, right through here. So I'm going to leave that pretty light. There is a little shadow on it. And uh, there's a little shadow in here where it's underneath the water, where it kind of cascades over. And I can see right now where I filled in an area that I need to leave white right there where that water comes above there. So I can just pick that out with my eraser. Yeah, that's the nice thing about uh, putting in a mid-tone where you can go either direction. Now this rock comes down here and there's some water in here. It's mostly shadow. So now we begin to uh, begin to pick out a few details. And there's a little bit darker rock surface up here. And if you notice, there's the uh, the water cuts across, cuts across here, but there's also some rock right here, and then there's this crevice, cra a crack right there. And I want to indicate that. That's pretty dark right there. And it's actually pretty dark right along that edge there. Like, just like that. Okay, and then I can kind of darken that a little bit. This area right along here is quite dark. And it comes down, there's a little piece that comes down in here. I'm getting outside of my box here, but 
comes across here like this. So we're going to darken this area right through here, just with the side of my pencil. I'm mostly interested in right where these two values join right here because there's some lighter areas down in here that will pick out with the eraser. So right now, remember, we're just looking at shapes and values. We're not really getting into much detail at this point. And just like that. Then there's a little bit of rock or some water right there, a little bit of rock that comes right, right through here like that and we're just going to indicate that like this and it comes down into this other block other grid there's some water there a little bit of the rock right here but since we're just focusing on this one right now let's just uh, can concentrate on this area so now i can take my smudge tool and uh, we'll just begin to blend these pencil marks here a little bit. Just like that. And come down here. This comes down there. And then you've got this crack right in here, the crack in that rock. Now, I'm going to take my uh, cotton ball here with some graphite on it, and I just want to add some more mid-tone there, because I'm going to pick out some of that with the water. But I need to have some mid-tone in there. So let's see what we can get here with the... Uh, pink pearl. There's a little bit of stuff going on right there. A little bit of, of graphite actually right in here. And I don't want to get too close to that, too much in that, because that's getting too detailed yet. Then we've got some of the water up here on the surface. It kind of goes back this way, and it sort of a little bit goes this way, and over here, and there's a little bit that goes right through here, like that. Kind of fans out a little bit, a little bit over here, a little bit over there, and then there's some uh, some rock face right in here. And give that a little bit of value there and on here there's some water up here and over in here there's some light water on this surface and it's kind of tricky to indicate that but you can just sort of lightly pick up some of that graphite right there now we've got an area up here shaped right in here that's dark and it kind of defines uh, it comes in like this Let me get this over here it comes in right here down and then it comes back into a crack right there and it comes up like this and then it kind of comes around and then down like here, like that, and it's dark in here, just like so. And then there's a little bit right here. bit of a light edge right there that sort of you don't want to go all the way out to that you want to 
keep away from there a little bit because it sort of defines that uh, separates these two is two edges here two uh, surfaces this one being in front of that one and let me soften that a little bit okay like that and then this one isn't right in here okay now I've got this water right here that's uh, shaded. Well, it's not really so much, it is in shade, but it's also, you're seeing the blue of the water there. It's not the white foam. So we wanna shade that in. And same way, it's a little darker than, and make it a little bit darker because it's not as dark as the rocks, but it's darker than this shaded part of the, of the white foam coming off there. So we wanna add a little bit more graphite in here just like that and again we'll soften it a little bit now your white foam comes off of here and it has some a shadow a shadow another rock on that's outside the frame is casting a shadow on this right here so we want to add some value in there it's darker underneath here because it's coming over the rocks and this you're seeing underneath the rock here and there's a little bit of water coming off this way and then we got this rock surface right here comes around and there's a little crack in the rock right there and then there's some water that comes down sprinkles through this right here so just sort of indicate that a little bit now I'm going to carry this edge over again a little bit more. And now at this point, you can start putting in a few details. Like if I've got this piece comes in here and it sort of goes around like that. There's some uh, part of the face of the rock is right here. There's a few little raised areas up here. This comes down like that. This piece right here is a pretty sharp edge. It comes down like this. It comes around and down in here. And we don't really want it that strong because Okay. Now there's water laying on top of this rock. So I'm just going to kind of lighten some of that area. Just like that. Okay. And you can begin to do a little bit more a little busy work, a little bit of detail in here. Some of the, you can see some of the rock showing through right here and over here where the where the uh, little branches of the of the waterfall have come over the edge there and I'm going to switch to this uh, kneaded eraser because this is where it comes in really handy because you can get a real fine edge and pick out very small little details like uh, right here
and just things like that. There's a few little grips coming off of here. Okay, and then even in this uh, blue water here, there's some different values in there. It's darker here, there's a little bit dark area there, dark area there, and that gives it a little uh, shape so it's not, uh, it's not just a flat value there. Just uh, darken some of that. And Again, I'm going to need to bring my graphite over here, like so, and <clears throat> we can also begin to put a few more little fissures in here. It's hard to stay in one spot, you want to keep moving over and do something in the area right next to it, but I'm trying to illustrate this as uh, how you can just take it one block at a time and develop it. There's a little bit of a rock showing through here. Okay, and now Basically, we've done this same thing. We can do the same thing in each one of these squares, you know, and keep in mind that, you know, that each square is going to tie into the one next to it. So you want to make sure that they blend. Like this one right here, right there, it blends into this area over here. There's a little bit of a rock showing right there. And then this area up here comes around like that. And there's some little crab crevices right in here. And so you want to realize this is all one piece, but it helps to break it down a little bit, you know, and work on one area at a time. I have done this painting before where I didn't do a grid, and it is a, a real nightmare trying to keep track of where you're at when you're drawing these rocks. And so the grid works so much nicer. You don't have to keep wondering, well, is that a rock or is that a, a water or what? When I drew this in, I took in and after I had my shapes, I gave it some value, the whole thing value, and then I just lightly began to separate the, the two values, you know, the, the top of the rock face that was giving the light and the shadow area. <clears throat> Again, keeping it simple and, and uh, not getting into detail, but, but uh, indicating what was a, an area that was getting sunlight and what was an area that was um, in, the, uh, in the shadows. And you just keep doing this with each area, and uh, pretty soon it all starts to come together. Sometimes you can just draw with a little smudge tool, you get so much stuff on it there. <coughs> Okay, and see how this is all starting to come together here? Now I start adding a little bit of a bit more graphite up here.
and I can take my kneaded eraser and pick out some more of this water over here. It comes around there and over here, a little bit over there, some over here. These are just little rivulets, they call them, where they just sort of, the wave has crashed on here and then the water is slowly dripping, uh, running off these little channels. And as you get further along, now we want to start indicating that there's a difference in the values on this dark area here. For example, there's an area that's right down through here, and it's very dark. And there's like just little, little ridges that go down in here. If it starts to look too mechanical, you just want to soften it, you know. If you start seeing too many repetitive shapes, remember that nature likes a variety. So put a little variety in there. This is a crack that's going this way. You can add that. It doesn't have to be there. You can still add it. If, it think, if you think it'll make the drawing better. Same with this right here. Put that up above me. And we can get down in here. like this Little, little waterfall starting right there it comes off of there okay and then if we get down into here um, most of this is white foam but even the white foam down here has got some values so it's not perfectly flat white it's got some uh, dark light patterns in it and so I'm going to give it a value here, a sort of a mid-tone value, and then we can begin to pick some of that off of there. Like, uh, let's see, I'm right here. Okay, I'm coming down here. And let's see, let's put a few areas where the rock shows through here. Just like that. And same with here. Okay, now there's a edge that comes right through here and down. And so I kind of like that edge. And put it right about there. It comes down like that. It comes down, then it sort of goes out here. Right there. Kind of comes down. And then it sort of jag cuts across here. And there's a edge right here and this area behind the edge is darker than this so you can tell that that's two separate shapes there okay <clears throat> now 
Sometimes you have to go back in and pick something out again that you've covered. Like my little waterfall right there. These areas right in here. And then this area is, make that darker. This area is a little bit lighter. It's got a shadow there. And there's some rock showing, just barely showing underneath the, uh, the water there. And now I want to make a, a, indicate some of these different values in here. And the way I do that is I just take my kneaded eraser and I can pick out some of them. Like that, soften it a little bit so it doesn't look like it's such a flat surface. Or I can use my uh, pink pearl and uh, pick out some of this graphite in here. Just like so. Most of the white here is right around where the water comes over the rocks. That's the whitest area, and then out in here, gets a, uh, there's a few values, but your whitest whites are going to be right where it, crest, where it uh, cascades over the rocks. That's where the light really hits it most dramatically. Okay, and I got this edge right in here. And then there's this rock surface right here. And there's a crack that comes down in here, something like that. And there's a shaded area right through here. There's a crack right in there. Okay, and then this little bit darker back over here. And there's a little bit of a highlight right through here. Just kind of indicate that. And again, it's just a matter of, of, uh, seeing your values and, and uh, putting those in, recognizing shapes, find your simple shapes, simplify the shapes, and, uh, <clears throat> and do it like that. Let's get a little bit more in here, a little bit more there. Okay, some of the water over here is kind of cascaded down. There's foam in here. So anyway, this is a, this is basically how you do that area. Now the other area that's somewhat of a challenge is your your uh, your wave pattern up here. And I've taken this section right here, and the dominant feature in here is this wave pattern right in here. So if I kind of come up, and there's a little piece right here behind it. But if I come up like this and over like that, and then I shade that in, again, don't get into details yet up here. Just get these basic uh, dark and light patterns in there. A 
as they go back here, they get smaller, these little peaks. And then you can begin to uh, lighten different areas, like right over here, reach down a little bit, across there, down in here. If you can kind of pick out one area that's sort of dominant and get that to where it stands out and recognizable, uh, the rest of it kind of falls in place. Okay, and like in this one right here, you've got this pattern that goes through here, kind of goes through like this, and there's a, a, a large wave pattern right there, kind of comes down like this, and sort of peaks all along there, and sort of you just sort of add in those little peaks. And this one's got a pretty good size dip in it right there. There's a piece that comes in through here. And a few little other things going on there. And again, we can add our, our uh, graphite, our mid-tone. And let's darken this a little bit more. Just like in drawing uh, folds on clothing. If you've got a, a raised area, you're, you're going to have a shadow, and then you're going to also have a, a little bit of a highlight, light area. It's a little bit of a trough of, of light that comes right through here. And you can just keep going with this, just like that. <coughs> You've got a, a, a real fine point eraser. You can come in here and try to pick out some of those little pieces. We can take this chalk and uh, lighten this area right in through here. And more so, and then <clears throat> you can take the chalk and uh, pick out some areas up here, some little areas in there, little swirls and stuff like that. Okay. Now, looking at this drawing, remember in an earlier video I said that it's always a good idea to give a little bit of time. And, uh, and look back at your drawing. And uh, doing so, I can see that uh, I've got a little error, a little error thing I missed in the first part here. Let's see, we got that point comes down. There's a little bit of waterfall there. And then this comes in here. So I think I need to make this 
area right in here a little, a little bit bigger and I'll bring this down like that. And this is not going to be exactly accurate because I did get off a little bit, but unless you're standing out there looking at it, you're not going to notice it. So let's just bring that down a little bit. Shadows underneath here. Okay, I can live with that. Again, you just continue each one of these little grids, just like we did here. Uh, develop it and uh, before you're you know when you're you think you're done with the picture make sure everything blends together uh, I you normally wouldn't have this stronger grid showing I just did this for the camera so the camera can pick it up so uh, you would probably be erasing these lines as you went but it is a great way to get into you know, to establish detail where everything's at when you've got a very confusing uh, looking uh, scene in front of you that you're trying to draw. Okay. All right. Uh, join us for number eight. Video number eight. We'll do another scene of something that's got a lot of detail in it.